Hey guys, welcome back to No Catch Your Name. It's me, Ella, and this is episode 64, I think. Hey guys, welcome back. <laughs> it's been a little while since I filmed, uh, over a week. <laughs> I've just been super busy um, doing family stuff, and uh, we've been having car trouble and stupid stuff like that. Uh, if you're on the Facebook group or something, you would know that, but... I'm gonna go ahead and hop in. I've actually got some finished objects. Two of them I don't have with me, but I will insert photos of them. But I've got five of them with me, and um, I've only got one whip that I'm working on right now, and it's almost done, actually. So, yeah, I'm gonna hop in. <laughs> My first uh, finished objects, I'll show you, because I got four of them. I'm planning on making 12 of these, but in different colors, and these are four white ones. These are for a craft show that I'm thinking about doing um, in spring next year. Let's see here. It's called the Chicken Amigurumi by Snoodle Studio. Um, it's a free pattern. It'll be linked below. But it's little chickens. <laughs> uh, I made four white ones. They're just cute little amigurumi chickens. I kind of messed his eye up. I gotta fix his eye. Let me get a cuter one to show you. There you go. <laughs> uh, I actually meant to put safety eyes in these and I accidentally forgot to put them in before I closed it so they have stitched on eyes and I'll probably stitch on the rest of them too just because of child safety and lower cost in making them so a bigger profit in selling them <laughs> but I do have four of these little white ones and I want to make four brown ones and four black ones and I might try to make some other colors too if I can get around to it but I've got like 20 or 30 patterns <laughs> of little amigurumis like this that I want to make 12 to 20 of for the craft show plus I'm gonna make some bigger ones which I'll show you some of them here in a minute but yeah so these chickens it's all made with scrap yarn it's, I know it's Red Heart Super Saver white and bright yellow the red is cherry red and the orange isn't Red Heart it's uh, some random orange that I've had for a while and I'm finally on the last little cake scrap of it so I'm gonna have to get some more orange all right, my next amigurumi uh, finished object is adorable, but it's also for the craft fair. I made one and finished it, and I've got enough yarn in the same colors to make another one, and then I may make a few more in other colors. It is the Norwal Amigurumi by V. Lee. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it or not. I can't pronounce the um, shop name because it's in a different language, but that's the person who made it. But anyways, it's a Norwal. <laughs> it is adorable. It's a little piece. I think this turned out so cute. I want to keep it really bad, but I'm going to try to sell it. That's the whole reason I made it is to sell it. This is super fast. I made this in like an hour, maybe an hour and a half, while watching Little House on the Prairie. Um, this is actually two strands of DK weight. It called for DK weight in the pattern, but I wanted it to be bigger. So I used two strands to make like a worsted weight, and I really wanted to use this yarn. I've had this yarn in my stash for forever. And this yarn is um, Yarn B urban chic and I think the color was aqua or something similar to that I can't remember 100% but it's just really pretty shades of blue with like white flecks in it and then this random colors <laughs> but I've got enough of this to make another one of these and uh, for his little cheeks it's just some um, red heart oh uh, gosh I can't remember what it's called perfect pink or something it's not perfect pink cause that's the pale one this is a slightly darker than pale and then white for that and just safety eyes and a little stitched on mouth but he is so cute he's made in one two three four five parts his little fins are separate and his tail fin and his body and his horn super quick I love this little guy he's so cute but yeah I'm gonna make one that looks just like this and I might make a couple solid color ones like um, blue or gray or something just you know in case a boy wants it and he doesn't like this color or you know whatever I don't know just variety <laughs> this is another free pattern all right, my other two finished objects I'll have to pop up pictures for because they're for my sister and she's already collected them. Well, one's for my nephew, but it's her son. So uh, the first one is a free pattern and it is called the Googly Eyed Monster Hat by Plus Three Crochet and I'll pop it up. I actually made him one of these years ago when he was two and uh, he's now seven. <laughs> and uh, he wore it all the way up until recently. Like he would wear it on his head and it wouldn't come anywhere near his ears because it's for a two year old. <laughs> Um, and like one of the eyeballs was falling off and my sister asked me if I could make it longer so I was like well I'll just make a, a whole new one <laughs> because this one's like been through the mill it was really fuzzy from being used and all that so I went ahead and just refound the pattern 
even though I probably could have made it without the pattern, but it's a free pattern. It's not on Ravelry, it's on a blog, but I'll link it anyways below. And uh, it's just a really cute little hat. It's just, it's basically a beanie with like the two googly eyes. It's just like a tube with an eye on the end of it. And then the pupils are uh, crochet. I guess you could use safety eyes if you had some big ones. But Ben seems to really love that hat, so now he has a kid size one. <laughs> so if he loves it in a few years, I guess I'll have to make a like a preteen size one. <laughs> the other pattern that I made my sister and she already got, you would have seen it if you have um, watched the Vlogmas videos that I put out. And it's called the Cuddle Size Nutcracker by Storyland Amis. Um, it's a paid for a pattern, but it's super adorable and totally worth it. <laughs> but uh, I'll pop it up here too. It is super cute and it was really fast actually. I was a little worried when I first started the head that it was going to take a while. But the head was the longest part because the head's huge <laughs> and the hair, hair like that always takes forever because you have to put the hair on and then untwist it, the plies, and then brush it out to make it fluffy. So that did take a little while, but the rest of it was super fast. I made the rest of the body and all that just in one setting. Uh, and sold it all together and it was ready to go. Now Storyline Amis, or Amis, however you want to say it, <laughs> um, has a ton of really cute patterns and I've actually got two gifted to me. Um, thank you, you know who you are, I know who you are, so that's all that matters. But it was Mr. and Mrs. Claus and I would love to try to make them before Christmas this year but I'm just so busy doing other things I probably won't. But they will for sure be made for next year. <laughs> that is all my finished objects. Um, I am almost finished with another one. I was going to try to finish it before <laughs> I filmed, but um, we had to go this morning to get the car worked on, and uh, I ended up just hanging out at my mom's and talking with her instead of crocheting, which is what I planned to do, but uh, we ended up talking the whole time anyways, so um, I'll have to show it to you in bits. This is my only current whip, but um, it's almost done. I'm working on one of the legs. And then after I finish the leg, I have to make the other foot and leg and stuff it and then just sew it all together. And then I will have to make eyes for it. So yeah, okay, I think I got all the pieces. So this is it's got it's this little this is gonna be its body. <laughs> it's a big old body. And this yarn is a Hobby Lobby yarn and wait, it's right here. It's I love this yarn. Crushed raspberry. This is what it looks like in the skein form this is the second skein i just i just literally right before i started filming this used up the entire first skein so i first made the body and i left the string to uh sew it together and then i made the head which does have some shaping on it the eyes will be up here and then I'll, I'll stitch on a nose right there and then this will give away what it is the ears <laughs> it's a bunny rabbit i like these ears with their strings and then I got the arms, and there's still a bunch of ends on these. I haven't woven in any of the ends. <laughs> Those are the like the pads, so this it'll go in like that towards its body. Ew, dropping everything. And then I just finished off the first skein entirely. Uh, this is the foot; it's not stuffed. And I just started working up the leg. That stitch marker is from Hannah at the Cozy Cottage Crochet. She sent that to me way earlier this year and I'm using my penguin hook that my sister got me for Christmas last year it's a Bates uh, F Susan Bates F and the hook if you're interested is from the clay bean company on Etsy no they're not on Etsy they got their own website just google clay bean company clay bean company they're also really active on um, Instagram all of my polymer clay hooks are from her because I love them <laughs> and my sister bought me a whole bunch for Christmas last year but yeah so, and it is a paid for pattern technically because it's in a book. It's not on Ravelry. I tried to look. The designer is, and I linked it on my project page, but the book isn't on Ravelry. Or was it? Maybe it was, but the pattern wasn't. Anyways, the book I got at Joann's, it's Cuddly Animals to Crochet by Lucia. It's spelt Forthman, but I don't know how to pronounce it because it's got one of those little things above the O. <laughs> so I'm not sure how to pronounce it. But the pattern is Bunny. Let me get the picture. This is the bunny. So I've got all of it made, but the two legs aren't done. I don't think it has a tail. And then I gotta make eyes for it. Oh, and cheeks. I forgot the cheeks. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's cute. I am mean, making it bigger than it calls for because the yarn that it calls for is smaller yarn. Uh, I don't know what size. It doesn't really say what size. 
You're supposed to use Merino. Osterman or Merino. I don't know what brand that is. So I don't know uh, what size it is. But the hook you're supposed to use is a 2.5. <laughs> so it's smaller. So it would have been a B hook. So it would have been a much smaller amigurumi. But I, for my amigurumis, I like using F hook and uh, or G. These chickens are made with G. And the pattern, I think, calls for an F or slightly smaller. But I wanted, I purposely wanted to make some bigger amigurumis to take with me to that craft fair because I want to have a ton of little things at lower prices and then some bigger things at the higher prices. But yeah, so I'm almost done with this little bunny. And this book has got a lot of cute animals in it. The next one I'm going to make for the craft fair, if I can find it, is a cat. I've already got the pattern picked, or the color picked out for it. Oh, I'm looking for it. <laughs> oh, there it is. Um... I think it's called Cherry Cola or something like that. It's Red Heart Super Saver. But it's just this little cat wearing boots. <laughs> so I'm going to make one of those. And there's a bunch of other cute little animals in here. I think each chapter has like a picture. Oh yeah, see? Here's the forest animals. It's a fox, an owl, the bunny, a cute little deer, and a raccoon. And then the next section is the farm animals. There's one in here I want to make for myself. That's the sheep. And there's a bee, the cute sheep, a pig, the cat, and a cow. That's not loud. <laughs> it's right in my microphone. I'm trying not to hit my microphone today. <laughs> Alright, next is Africa animals. It's got an ostrich, a zebra, a hippo, a giraffe, and a lion. I think the lion looks kind of funny because all these other ones kind of look actually like the animal and then the lion's got a square head. <laughs> I want to make one of these hippos to take too because I got a ton of blue and I want to use some of it to make a hippo. Let's see, I think there's two more sections. There's Asia. Right here, Asia, there's a tiger, an elephant, and a panda bear. Is that all that's in Asia? I thought there was more. I guess not. And then there's Australia. And it's got a kangaroo a koala and a platypus. <laughs> the platypus is cute. <laughs> and I think there's one more section. Yeah, South America. And it's got a sloth, a monkey, some kind of lizard thing. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I think there's a turtle also. Oh, the water section. There's one more. Water. And then there's an octopus, a whale, a frog, and a turtle. I really like the um, turtle shell. Let me show you that real fast. I like the way it's done. If you can see it, it's, it's like octagons put together to make a shell. There's a better picture here, but there's also a pattern everywhere. Let's see if I can kind of blur, <laughs> blur it out some. I really like that shell. But yeah, so that's that book. I bought it at Joann's. It was, I can't remember if this was the price. It says 1995, but I bought it when all our books were half off or 40% off. I'm thinking it came to like 12 something or 13 something. So I'm not sure. I don't know if this is the exact price because sometimes the price is the one on the back, but sometimes it's not. <laughs> and I can't remember. It's been a while. It's been a few months. But yeah, so that's my bunny. I'm just about, I got to crack into the second skein to make the, finish the legs. And then I want to try to use up the rest of the skein to make other little things. Like I said, I got a bunch of little patterns that I want to make. So I'll probably use as much of this as possible for that. Because one of my goals is to use up a lot of the yarn that I've had forever. Like I always keep a big stock of solid colors for my little projects like this. But I've got a bunch of variegated that I bought because I thought it was pretty or it was really cheap on sale. And I've not used it. It's still just sitting in there. So I'm wanting to get it and use it to either give away or sell and then you know I'll have that space to put more solid colors because I do always have solid color yarns to make all the amigurumis and stuff and uh, I just want to use up some of this yarn that I've had forever and this is one of them I bought this it was either earlier this year or late last year I bought two balls of it to make a bunny rabbit <laughs> amigurumi with that's when I saw it I just thought it would be a cute bunny rabbit because the colors and so it took me this long to finally start it but I've got this bunny almost all together or made and then I just gotta piece it together I think it's gonna be so cute and big it's gonna be way bigger than I thought it was gonna be but it's because I'm using a bigger hook than the pattern calls for and yarn 
But um, I love Big Amigurumi, and I think other people will too. I actually went to the same fair last year. I didn't have my own booth. I just had some items in a person I know's booth, and the only one that sold was a Big Amigurumi, a big uh, koala bear. But uh, the elf bombs were looked at, but I think my area is just too clean still for it because uh, the girl that was at the booth told me that a lot of kids looked at them, you know, like teenagers and wanted them, but their parents wouldn't let them get it. But, eh, you know, whatever. <laughs> I've still actually got a lot of elf bombs and little octopuses and a couple other little things that I can take to, you know, with me again. They're still put up from last year. So I'm wanting to take a ton of amigurumi and have my own table this year. I don't think the table is too much to rent. I think it's like 40 to $100. I think it's less than 100 though, for sure. And as long as I make that back and maybe a smidge more, I'll be fine. But even if I don't make any money, uh, you know, I can say that I tried it and it just didn't work out. My town is pretty small, so I don't know how good amigurumi would do there. But there's never amigurumi there. There's only over two other booths with crochet stuff at it. One is a lady who makes baby blankets. She has a ton of crochet baby blankets and sewn ones. And uh, she also has, like every year, a rack with um, kitchen towels that's got the crochet topper on it. And the other one is another booth that's not even crochet, but she just happens to have crochet hats at it and headbands. But, you know, Earth Day is the end of April, <laughs> and in Tennessee, it's already getting hot, so I don't think hats would do that good. Uh, maybe if it was a fall one or, you know, early winter one. But I'm thinking these would do good, emigrumis, because I can make a bunch of signs and uh, have them laid out cute to, one, catch kids' eyes, because, you know, if a kid sees it and wants it, they can mom or dad or whoever might buy it for them. And um, I can, I'm can. i planning on making some cute, bright, colorful signs that catch eyes about, you know, great gift, great um, stocking stuffer, or party favor, or something like that. Because, you know, these are pretty small, and I'm planning on trying to make a few things that's this size or smaller. These I'll probably sell for like $5 each. So if I make anything smaller, I could sell them for less than that, you know. And if a kid's running around with $10 that their grandpa gave them, they might want a chicken or... Or Norwal, but the Norwal will be a little bit more expensive <laughs> because one, it's bigger, and two, it's got the safety eyes, which adds cost to it. But uh, yeah, <laughs> and I did get this yarn on sale. I almost always only buy yarn on sale now for sure because I do have a pretty good stash going in there. And uh, you know, I haven't really bought any yarn myself in forever. I don't even remember the last yarn that I bought. I've gotten a lot gifted to me recently, a lot of spring green, which I love because I've made <laughs> a ton of Grinch-related hats and stuff and Jessie's long stocking cap. You know what? I don't think I ever showed that. Yeah, I did. I showed that last week. Duh. I just love this narwhal. Didn't he turn out so cute? <laughs> okay, leave that narwhal alone. <laughs> but yeah, so that's all of my finished objects and my only whip is the bunny rabbit, which name is Winnie. The pattern is Winnie the rabbit. I want to make a bunch of animals out of this book. You know, I bought this book, so I need to make the patterns out of it. I've got a couple other books in there with amigurumi patterns in it that I've been looking at. One is a farm one. That's one reason I thought these chickens would do good because I live in the south, and the part of the south that I live in is a really country part. <laughs> um, you know, there's lots of farms and cow farms and, you know, ranches and stuff around here. So, and a lot of women, <laughs> usually the, the middle-aged older women, kitchens are themed chicken. So I thought the chickens would do good here. So I'm definitely want to make a lot of chickens. So I got the four done and I want to make at least eight more different colored ones. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see here. What else do I have to talk about? What is today? Today is Monday, December 10th. It's 15 days till Christmas. I got my ornament swap package today, but I already put it all up. I took a picture of it. It's on the Facebook group if you're interested. Um, Speaking of the ornament swap, everything has went really good with it. Uh, as far as, you know, from all my emails and stuff, every single package has been shipped, but three I haven't gotten confirmations from yet, but they're supposed to be shipping it today. So if I don't get an email from them today, I will send them another email reminding them. But so far, everybody has uh, contacted me and, you know, people's already gotten a lot of their packages and there's some just, you know, floating around in the middle service right now. That's why I wanted the deadline to be early December so that it might beat the uh, holiday rush. 
but it's a lot of, it was a lot of fun. My ornament's already hanging up there. You can't see it because of Jesse. You know, it's all up there. But it's a snowman. It's super cute. And uh, I'll probably do it again next year. <laughs> uh, I may have to get someone to help me because if there's more people doing it this year, there were 42 people, including me, participating. Right? Yeah, because there was 21 pairs of people, including me and my partner. My sister did it. <laughs> um... My sister's Hattie, by the way. She's a cross-stitcher. She doesn't crochet. She used to have a channel, but she hasn't uploaded on it in forever. And I keep, like, telling her to hurry up and do it. <laughs> like, come on, Hattie, do it. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So it was a lot of fun doing ornament swap. And I hope to do it again in the future. I've got a lot of patterns um, in my Ravelry. I got, you know, I have different bundles, folders, or whatever separated out for the uh, craft fair and also for the fair fair, our county fair because I usually start working on fair projects in January because then I have, you know, January to the end of August to get the stuff made and get ready to go to the fair. I already have the baby blanket that I want to make and I think I found the afghan that I want to make for it. And that'll be the first things that I start because those are usually the, more, the most complex. And then the rest of the stuff I'll just fill in as the year goes by next year. Uh, last year I entered 21 items I think and I got 17 ribbons 16 or 17 I can't remember one of them was the purple ribbon oh, that I've been wanting forever and it was from my Mandela Madness which is on my couch <laughs> but um this year I want to enter more <laughs> I want I want my, like one of my goals is to enter something in every single crochet category and ba about the only ones I didn't enter last year was uh, the jewelry ones because I didn't, at the time, I didn't have any crochet thread. Now I have a bunch of it because Walmart had some marked down and I grabbed a bunch of it. So I do have a bunch of crochet thread now. So I'd like to make some of the crochet jewelry to enter. And I'm actually wanting to enter some sewn things this year. I'm not an amazing sewer, but I've gotten really good at sewing project bags. <laughs> so I thought I might try to sew a couple other little things just to enter into the fair that way and possibly uh, some baked goods items. Devin's been wanting to do that himself and we can both enter uh, if he wanted to make something he could enter. They have all kinds of craft categories. You know, um, uh, I can't even think of any of them. They have hundreds of them. If you watched my videos last year, you would have seen that. I talked about it a lot. There's hundreds of lots to enter and uh, Crochet Along has, I don't know, 50 of them. <laughs> so, um, and then there's knit also if you knit and crochet you could enter even more stuff plus if you sew on top of that or cross stitch or, or, or in, like a paper artist you know with like drawings <laughs> I don't know what that's called paintings and stuff and photography and all the canning and stuff like that and they have all kinds of flower arrangements and wood crafts and recycled crafts and wreaths and I can't even think of everything but there's just all kinds of categories it's a lot of fun so I want to try to enter a bunch, of, a bunch more stuff this year, <laughs> this next year. Uh, technically, I could have already started on fair projects because it has to be made from when one fair ends to before the other one starts. So I could start September this last year, 2018, and work all the way through August um, 2019 and enter any of that stuff that I made into 2019's fair. But I usually just start in January just because, you know, the holidays and all that. But, um... I don't know, I might, I might have made a couple things that I'll enter. I'm trying to think of what I've made recently. But like Heidi Yates has come out with a bunch of new flags. A really cute Santa one she just came out with that I can make and enter as the decorations. I'm thinking about entering an advent calendar wall hanging thing as my other Christmas decoration because it's super cute and I think that would do good. Uh, I learned for sure that crochet wreaths do really well. I guess whoever judges the wreaths thinks that they... Um, I have more detail or more work or something than the ribbon reefs, the, the what's that, poly mesh reefs, because uh, I'm pretty sure I placed in every single one of the reefs that I entered. Not necessarily first, but I definitely got a ribbon with each reef. I'm pretty sure, let's see here, my snowman got one, the fall one got one, the Grinch got first place the year before last. Uh, did I make, a, yeah, my Halloween wreath got one. My 4th of July one, or my American flag one, got blue. Pretty sure all my reefs placed. 
Oh, except the Easter one. But even I thought that it wasn't that good when I made it because I, I finished that one, I think, the night before the fair. I wasn't happy with it. So, um, but I did procrastinate last year. So, this year I will start working sooner on the wreaths because they're super easy to make a crochet wreath. Just the most annoying part is making the form because it's just back and forth crocheting forever. And then you gotta stretch it around and sew it on. It's just annoying. So, I procrastinate that. And then it's basically just decorated with appliques or little amigurumi parts. But yeah, so that was a total sidetrack. <laughs> uh, I don't think I have anything else to mention right now. I kind of fell behind on Vlogmas, but I didn't commit to doing it every day. Uh, and I've just been super busy. If you're on the Facebook group, you know that we've been having car trouble, which we kind of got fixed today, I think. <laughs> um, we got an oil change today because we needed that. And we were going to change our thermostats and coolant. And when we went to the mechanic that we know, he changed the oil for us. And the car wasn't overheating at all. Even before the oil change, it wasn't oil. Um, it just stopped doing what it was doing. <laughs> so he thinks it was either like the thermostat was stuck. We have two thermostats in our car. Uh, one of them may have been like stuck or, you know, sticking a little bit. Or there might have been some kind of gunk in the line that got shot out or whatever. Um, either way, it's not overheating anymore. So we do still have the thermostats and the coolant. He did top it off in coolant. And then he did the oil change. But um, we'll just keep them instead of returning them just in case it happens again. But he did check our thermostats. He took the tubing off and all that and checked them. And they're fine. So it was just a fluke, I guess. <laughs> because now it's not doing it. And Devin went to work and it's fine and everything. So, yeah. Go figure when we finally go to the mechanic, it's not messing up. <laughs> Luckily, we know a mechanic. Um, well, I don't know him personally. My mom knows him. But, uh so if it does start messing up again we have someone to go to without having to make appointments and stuff but but the other sad news is um yesterday I can't remember if it was yesterday day before that me and Devin was out uh just you know running around shopping and stuff and he's we stopped to get gas and he was out pumping it and I was sitting in the car and I just happened to look down at my rings and the diamond from my engagement ring was gone and I have no idea when it came out, so it's, it could be anywhere. It could be in the house, or it could be at a store, or in the car, or anywhere. But it was gone, and that was just real sad. I know it's just a stone, but it's still sad that, you know, my engagement ring diamond is gone. So, um, <laughs> I'm just going to put the band up and still keep the band. And uh, I told Devin, Devin said that he'd get me another one. But I told him if he does, to just get me a band, because I don't want to lose another diamond and I, I was so thankful that he's not one of those dumb men that go out and spend fifteen thousand dollars on a ring because losing a few hundred dollar diamond is a lot less scary than losing a thousands of dollars diamond i don't know why women wear such expensive things that could be lost but um my rings are the only jewelry i wear i used to wear necklaces and every now and then i still do but it, it irritates my my skin and turns me really red like if it touches me anywhere and i'm allergic to cheap metals <laughs> nickel and stuff like that any of the cheaper stuff irritates my skin so um i would have to have real stuff and i did used to have a white gold necklace but i've either lost it or just got rid of it over the years and i don't really wear jewelry i'm not the jewelry kind of person i wish i could get my ears pierced but every time i do they get infected probably because of the whole cheap metal thing but um because i'd love to have earrings and like dangly cute ones and like around the holidays you know like little holiday themed ones but i always have such bad luck with them getting infected that i just forget you know give it up i did have them pierced twice at one point but i've given them up so the only jewelry i ever do wear is my rings so it's kind of a bummer that i lost that one but oh well you know we'll replace it with just a regular ring and uh not have to worry about losing <laughs> losing the expensive part of it uh again I guess that's about everything I want to babble about. It's been 30 minutes and a lot of it was just babbling. <laughs> but um, it is afternoon, isn't it? Yeah, it's 3.15. I'm going to hop off here, get this edited, and some Vlogmas clips that I've been gathering the last few days. And I'm going to try to finish this bunny today and possibly start on something new. I don't know. I haven't made up my mind yet. And i got to get ready to cook some dinner and all that fun stuff. <laughs> like this video. Share it if you think someone else will like it. Subscribe if you're not. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.